Hello, what's up guys? It's Yuko here and welcome to the second episode of this SQF Lite tutorial. And as you can see on the screen, we will be adding this search bar functionality. So we will be able to search through our contexts. And as you can see, I fill this context list with Brooklyn Nine, -Nine characters because everybody loves Brooklyn Nine, -Nine and we will be able to search through them like let's search for Amy for Terry and Hitchcock so you get the point we will be able to search through our context here in our the search bar so we don't have to manually look up for them here in our main page Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is to implement a search bar. So for that we will need a second page called search page or something and in that page we will be able to search through our contents. So we don't have to scroll manually on this list and yeah, let's just jump into it. First thing we need uh, we need to create new page. So search context Let's copy this and replace everything yeah already done this search page we don't need this we don't need this we don't need this and Let's just delete everything. We don't need floating action button and we don't need this padding. Okay, so what else? Yeah, we also don't need this. And now let's create a route. Good search. Context search page. Okay, and we just need to add another button here that will take us to this new page that we just created. So let's create another floating action button. And just change the icon to search and navigate to this new route. So just copy this so it will now take us to the new page. Let's see if it works. Okay, we obviously, yeah, we forgot to change the zero tag. So search. I just think we need to restart it. Okay, so it takes us to a new page and in this new page we'll need some search well, what is the text field that will take our input. So let's create a new text field and we just need to also have a decoration, input the decoration. And just change the border so border I think it's outline let me check so yeah outline line input border and just create a label text and let's call it like keyboard so I know we should be we should have this search bar okay let's give it some padding okay so yeah we'll be able to search context by writing names and so, yeah writing names here and 
this will automatically eliminate the other contexts that are not relevant and yeah let's now implement this so for that we will need another another operation so let's it that will return context so it will be very similar to this get all context like this but we'll just call it search context and let's just delete everything and have a boilerplate code here so we will have another method called search context and it will take in the string keyword so string keyword and because we need to pass in this keyword to this method so let's now write this query so we will ret return the same type as this because we're practically just returning context but not all of them just the, the ones that we want so our rows equals to await and db.query and now the interesting part so we will be also querying the contact table but we have to pass in other arguments like where the name so for the name like and question mark because we will be mapping i mean searching through the names so i'll just write this uh, till the end and explain it so where arguments are and our keyword here so just wait till i'll finish this and i'll explain what this operator means so this thing here as you can see it's like the basic sql syntax and it means that i have some other other um, examples here and so we are now going to query through contact table her name like and this is just the argument here so her name is almost like key i don't know how to put is like keyword so what this means here that the this query will search through all of our contacts exactly the column name it will search through every name column in every contact in our context table and it will find the ones which include this keyword so this keyword can be anywhere in our name because of these two simple operators this sql syntax which basically means that this if this keyword is in between those two operators, I mean the signs or whatever, the, the, it will find any values that have this keyword in any position. So this keyword, let's say we are now searching for John, and let's just say that we write J and O. So this operator will now found, find anywhere where this name contains the two letters j and o and if we would type this like keyword with just this one divide separator or i mean divide operator but and it will just find the values that end with our keyword so if we will we will write just j o this will return nothing but if we write h and n it will return them because it ends with this keyword and this is the exact opposite of this operator here because this finds any values that start with keywords this is just basic sql you can like um, search yourself and this is just basic three operations and 
this is the most useful for us now. So we will check if name contains this keyword anywhere in the start, in, at the end, in the middle, just it has to contain it. So now that we have this met, I'll just delete this. Or no, I will comment it and you can play with this around if you want to. And so we have this method now and let's return to this page which where we have to use this method now. So let's go to search context. We have input decoration. Now we just need to create a new future builder. So it will be the same as we have it here. So we can just copy this. So let's copy this future builder to our search context. Okay, we need to have a column here future builder and it will return the same widget like I have um, created this context list so we can reuse it so let's see it returns John it's the same thing that's here but we don't want that so we will now change this get all context to the method that we wrote before so Let's go to contact operation to and put in search context. So search context. But as you can see, we have to pass in the keyword and this keyword, we will pass it from our text field and our text field will also need set state method, set state method so we can refresh the page, but Let's just first thing, let's just create this keyword. So I'll just create it here, string keyword. And yeah, it will be nullable for now. And here in our text field, we will need to call unchanged. So whenever our text field changes, and just the best the, the name it the value or like and now just create a method and we will set the keyword to a value and also call set state method so what this will do now i'll just repeat myself and we need this string keyword and this keyword will change here on on change method so whenever we use this whenever we type something here so let's john it will set our keyword to john and here in our future builder, we will take in this keyword and call the method in our contact operation, which will return all the relevant context. So every context with the name like the keyword we pass in. So or and let's now just return context. So Okay, so something's wrong. The search context list data. Okay, so what's wrong? This should be working now, but I don't know, I'll just, let's see. And meanwhile, we can return. We just repair this so if snapshot has data we will display the context list 
or else we will return just new text so Okay, so let us now wait. A few moments later. Okay, guys, so I want to apologize because I was rushing a little bit and I made quite a few stupid errors. Like we forgot, just didn't return anything, we didn't parse anything, we just caught in a moment. So let's just parse this context so we are not now doing the same thing as we did here in get all context we are creating a list of contexts and we are mapping through all the rows that we are returning from this query and we are then parsing them back to a contact object so we can return this list of contexts so return contacts and so and before i change this to the actual contact name column here because it has to be the same obviously you cannot just make it up so yeah let's see if it works now So, yeah. So, as you can see, as it works now. And as promised, I've entered some Brooklyn Nana characters. And if we type, for example, A, it returns all the names containing A. So, Jake, Amy, Raymond, Charles, Gina, Rosa, and Adrian. And if we enter like C, it returns Charles, Hitchcock, and Scully, and so on. So you get the point. It's, it searches for containing letters. And that's it for this episode. And in the next episode, we will be creating foreign keys and another table. So we'll be creating. And next time, we will be creating another table called categories and we'll be able to categorize these characters and also implement like foreign keys and so on so if you enjoyed this video or if it helped you give it a thumbs up and as always see you next time